piano has always fascinated me. We had an old upright piano, which much to my parents' dismay, I used to pull apart quite regularly. I loved the fact that it was such a living creature in that the mechanism was a complex, but it produced this beautiful sound. Hi, my name is Ara Vaitukian and I'm a piano technician. A piano is a complex percussive musical instrument with over 12,000 parts made of felt, cloth, leather and all different kinds of wood. The piano was invented by Bartholomew Cristofori in 1700. He was a harpsichord maker from Padua and he was trying to improve the harpsichord. By replacing the plucked mechanism of a harpsichord, he replaced it with a mechanism which can throw the hammer onto the string and as you throw something, you can throw it faster or slower which gives you a softer or louder sound, and therefore he called it the pianoforte. A piano key is a lever. As you push the front of the lever, it pushes the rest of the mechanism up, which in turn pushes the hammer up to strike the string. The average piano has 88 keys. Piano keys are usually made out of spruce, because spruce is a very strong and light material. They are covered in a plastic top for the white keys and ebony for the blacks. Piano keys are not really worth anything because they're cut to fit an individual piano and you can't use them in a different instrument. Ivory was traditionally used because it had a nice smooth touch to it and it also, being slightly porous, would absorb moisture as you sweat it. Ivory became banned in the late 80s, so piano keys are no longer made of ivory. It's best not to kill elephants for the keys. There's about 100 parts for every note in a piano, so there's over 8,000 parts here and a lot of them are made of felt and cloth and sometimes what happens with the felts is that the felts expand and jam onto the pins. In human weather, that can often expand. But a very common reason why keys stick is that people drop things in between them. Unfortunately, you can't really fix a sticky key yourself because if the felt is expanded, then you have to take the mechanism out, you have to take the key out in order to ease it. There's three parts to a piano action. There's the hammer assembly, the whipping assembly, and then there's the key assembly. With the hammer assembly is the hammer with the core felt, the shank, the roller, and the flange. Originally, hammers started off with different materials, paper covered with leather and so on, and then it was discovered that a compressed felt gave a better sound, had more resistance, more bounce, and therefore it could be voiced and gave a much larger dynamic range than leather. In a concert situation, generally speaking, a hammer will last around 10 years depending on the amount of use. You can't replace the hammer felt yourself. A hammer felt is very, very highly compressed and it does need a very strong press to put it in properly. On this concert piano, there are 243 strings with an average tension of over 70 kilograms per string. That's a total of over 20 tonnes of tension on the frame. There are three strings in most of the notes, two further down and one single strings for the bottom eight notes. This is to give a much more even volume throughout the instrument. If the piano only had one string for each note, it would sound quite muted and quite dull. The three strings interact with each other to give a nice clear tone. Strings are made out of high carbon steel. The bass strings are usually covered with copper in order to make them heavier and slow the vibrations down in order to keep the tension up. In most grand pianos, you find that the strings are crossed and this gives a longer length of string for the size of the piano and also gives a better average tension on the frame. An interesting point with a piano is that being a percussive instrument, at the point where the hammer hits the string, it's completely lost its influence from the key. So there's no direct contact between the finger and the string. The only direct contact that the pianist has with the string is through the pedal. Most pianos have got three pedals, and particularly in the grand piano, the right hand pedal is the damper pedal. So when you press the pedal, all the dampers come up and therefore the notes can be held on and they ring on like so. When you press the left pedal, which is the, known as the soft pedal or una corda pedal, the whole action shifts to one side. Therefore, instead of hitting three strings for every note in the middle, it only hits two strings. The middle pedal on most grand pianos is called the sostenuto pedal, and it's designed to hold the notes up only on the ones which have been pressed immediately before pressing the pedal. I then press the middle pedal and it only holds on the notes that I've pressed just before pressing the pedal.
There are two different frameworks in a piano. There's the wooden framework in the case, and then there's the iron frame. The iron frame bolts onto the wooden framework, and they both work in tandem to hold the tension of the strings. So a modern concert instrument will have over 20 tons of tension onto the frame. The piano body is made out of timber, and it's usually laminated in order to give it more strength, and it's bent around in a big coil. The body is a multiple layers of maple or hard wood, which is glued together and then pressed round the mould. On a concert instrument, it's over six metres and it's all single length pieces of timber. The direction of the grain is very important because it not only gives it strength, but also assists with the transmission of the vibration throughout the piano. The sound body is the heart of the piano. It picks up the vibration from the string, which is transmitted through the bridge onto the soundboard. The soundboard then vibrates and produces the sound which you then hear through the air. An upright piano was invented as a compromise in order to fit into a smaller space. The grand piano has a wing shape to it. It has shorter, stiffer areas for the treble and larger, more resonant areas for the bass. In an upright piano, because it's square, you don't quite have those differences. And the other compromise also is in the action. In the grand piano works off gravity and the action is very efficient. It can repeat two and a half times faster than most uprights. Digital pianos have been improving tremendously over the last 30 or 40 years, but ultimately, if a person wants to play the piano or learn to play the piano, they have to do it on a real piano. In playing the piano, there's at least five different things that happen from the time the touch top of the key to the time the hammer hits the string and, and returns. Electronic instruments that have touch weight, they don't have the mechanical features of the mechanism of a piano. As a first piano, you should look at getting the best piano that you can afford. If the piano is not good enough for you to learn on, to practice what you've been taught, you won't enjoy playing and therefore you won't practice. If you don't practice, you won't learn the piano. Even a basic upright piano, which is in good order, is a good starting point, but certainly don't look at getting something which is a semitone flat or half the notes don't work because it won't encourage you to learn. Now you know how a piano works, check out how I tune the piano in the next video.